I want to show you a way to draw an isometric dungeon map that looks super cool, but takes no time at all and is extremely, extremely easy. I just finished up a new Patreon adventure called Flick Silverpin's Guide to the Ravenwood. The digital version is available now, link in the description. It's a, a hex crawl through a ghost-filled forest, and part of the adventure is this little five-room dungeon, the lair of an undead evergreen dragon. Now, obviously, this map has some extra stuff going on with the worms and the roots and the mushrooms and all that, but the basic cave dungeon layout part was extremely easy to draw. And I want to show you how you can draw a map like this that really elevates the way your dungeon maps look without adding a whole bunch of extra time or needing to know how to draw anything super fancy. So to draw an isometric map, you're going to need an isometric grid to work on. This might not be picking up very well in the, the camera, but I've got a PDF linked down in the description that you can print out yourself and use to draw all your isometric maps on. You'll also need a pencil and an eraser and some pens. I'm gonna be using these microns size eight and 12, and for an extra cool little step, a gray marker, I'm using this Copic C3. Okay, let's jump into it. This is a regular looking isometric dungeon, pretty cool, really easy to draw, but there's not a whole lot of dimension to it. So the super easy trick is to simply raise the walls by one square, by one tile, or in this example, like half a square. And just by adding a few extra lines to the map, it creates a whole nother level of dimension. Now this map looks cool, but let me show you how to do this with a little bit more style and interest, just to, to elevate it a little bit more. It's not any more complicated to draw. So let's say your dungeon has flat straight walls like a castle or something. All you have to do is add some vertical lines to the outside walls and voila, you've added a whole nother dimension to your dungeon. Now the trick is you're gonna wanna add an extra square, an extra tile of space to the northwest and northeast walls. Really, I think the best way to think about this is if you want a one tile wide tunnel in your dungeon or a one tile wide hallway, you actually need to make it two tiles wide. One tile for the floor and then one tile for the like north facing walls. Now let's say you want to make a more cave-like dungeon. Instead of sticking to the grid exactly, I'm just going to make the outline a little more jagged and wavy. And when it comes to making the smaller vertical lines, I sort of pull them away from the walls a little bit, like curve them outwards. Now the trick here is to start vertical and then move your line away from the wall, sort of away from the direction that the wall is facing, I guess. I suggest practicing a few walls or maybe starting with, with pencil and just try it out. It'll make sense once you get into it. And another good thing to remember is the corners where the, the wall changes what direction is facing. Those lines are gonna stay straight vertical, straight up and down. Okay, if you wanna add one more extra little step that really makes your dungeon pop, take your gray marker and fill in the wall areas. Super, super simple. It's not difficult at all and really adds that extra layer of dimension. Now let's sketch out an entire dungeon so I can show you just how easy and fast this technique really is. Now I'm planning my dungeon in pencil, just following the grid, no ruler necessary. And because I don't have a story for this dungeon that I'm drawing up here, I'm just making it up on the fly. I'm not really worried about how big the dungeon rooms are. I'm just fitting them together and connecting them with hallways. Of course, I'm being sure to keep those hallways two tiles wide and add in an extra row of tiles on the back side of each of the rooms. And of course, if you do have a plan for your dungeon, this step might take a, a little bit longer, a couple extra minutes, just to make sure all your rooms are connected and fit on the grid in the way you want. But if you use a pencil first, it's easy to change and rearrange stuff as you need. Just remember those extra tiles of space. Okay, now I'm going to start 
thinking with my size 12 microns. I absolutely love this pen. They finally made these bigger, fatter micron pens, and they're just such a nice, bold line, perfect for dungeon walls. And I like to kind of pull my lines when I need them to be straight, but you can see I'm just following the pencils and the grid. I'm not worrying about making them perfectly, perfectly straight. If you want perfect straight lines, just grab a ruler. But really, I find sometimes if you just slow down, take an extra few seconds to, to really focus and think about the line you're making, it's, it's really easy to, to pull a straight line down towards you. But you can forget all of that when it comes to the actual cave walls. These are so, so fun to draw. I'm still following the grid and my pencils, but these lines can just be wavy and bumpy and jagged. You know, it's supposed to be a natural cave, so the lines... They shouldn't be super straight and definitely shouldn't use a ruler on these. Now the example that I showed in the beginning of the video had these extra icons in each room and that's because that map was made to help dungeon masters run the dungeon for their players. But if you're a, a DM making a map to share with your players, you don't have to add all that extra drawing. Just throwing down a map like this with a bunch of empty rooms is plenty awesome. Really, you're just showing the, the scale of the rooms and how they connect, and then you get to describe all the cool stuff that's going on inside this dungeon, inside each of the rooms. Of course, I couldn't help myself, and I added in a couple of doors to the map just to show the, the separation from the cave parts to the more like human-built dungeon parts. I guess adding in a couple icons here and there can't hurt. Doors are, are really easy ones. They're just an archway with a little dot for a handle, or, or maybe three versions vertical lines for like iron bars or something. But now I've actually moved on to drawing the vertical lines for these walls. And for this, I'm using the size eight micron. The thinner line keeps these vertical lines from overpowering the, the thicker lines that are, you know, to separate the open areas of the dungeon from the, the solid ground. Now, when drawing these vertical lines, you don't have to be perfect about it. This is a dungeon after all. Just keep in mind the direction that the wall is facing, and you'll be amazed at how much dimension starts appearing as you move through this map. It's, it's so fun to imagine what exploring this cave might actually feel like, like what kind of monsters live down here, what kind of fun encounters players might have, all that good stuff. And I should say that I have sped up this footage, but it only took me 11 minutes to draw this map. And that's so fast that I'm gonna take a little bit of extra time and add this gray layer with the marker and really make this map pop off the page. Now, I love making dungeon maps so much because they are so fun and easy to draw. Of course, it's totally cool to draw a simple top-down map, but if you put in just a tiny little bit more time, really like spending, I don't know, 30 minutes instead of 20 minutes, you can make an isometric map with this added layer of dimension, and it just, it just takes it up one notch, one extra step cooler. And if you're playing a tabletop role-playing game and you throw down a map that looks like this for your players, even though it's really no more difficult to draw than a regular top-down map on a one-inch square grid, they are going to be surprised at how awesome it looks and get even more excited to explore this dungeon you've thrown down in front of them. So I hope this video inspires you to try drawing your own isometric dungeon map. If you'd like to support the channel, check out my Patreon where I release monthly tabletop role-playing game adventures and guidebooks. Also, the Dragon Town and the Darkness Below Kickstarter just wrapped up, but you can still check out the page, and late pledges are, are now up and, and happening, so you can still pledge late. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya! <laughs>